how much of the meaning that we communicate comes from the words we say compared to other things, the nonverbal things? This is a difficult question to answer. Some people think the answer is about 93%, with 53% of the information coming from the face, another 38% from the voice, and only 7% from the words themselves. This is quite a common belief. Mirabian's work has been criticised, though, for the way the studies were conducted. They were pretty artificial and didn't recreate how we really communicate. Michael Argyle tried to improve on those studies and suggested that nonverbal communication was 4.3 times as powerful as verbal communication, so that's still around 81%. Hasee and his colleagues suggested that nonverbal communication was also about four times as powerful, or about 80% of the message. Part of the reason why these numbers might be so high is because participants are guessing what the experimenter wants them to do. Trimboli and Walker showed that when you hide the true purpose of the study from participants, the overwhelming effect of nonverbal communication goes away. Our best guess, according to authors such as Bagoon, Guerrero and Floyd, is about 60 to 66 percent of meaning is communicated through things other than words. That number is going to go up or down depending on the context. If you're trying to make an assessment of someone's leadership ability, for example, whether someone has integrity, you tend to focus on the nonverbal, even if you're not really aware of doing it, and that's for a good reason. If you hear a politician speak on an election campaign, you know that their words have been carefully scripted. The words have been carefully crafted. After a while, we start to look beyond those words, and we start to look at things that we presume they can't control so well. We look at whether their eye contact looks meaningful, we look at the way they hold the baby, we look at whether they sweat, all these little subtle cues of whether someone's got integrity, they can be trusted and we rely on them. When the verbal and nonverbal channels are in conflict, the role or importance of nonverbals often tends to go up. Are you mad about something? No, I'm perfectly happy. Okay, just asking. The interaction that you just watched perfectly illustrates the point I'm making here. Here, the second person's verbal and nonverbal channels are totally in conflict. Verbally, she's saying she's not angry. Non-verbally, she's suggesting that maybe she is. But there's no doubt in your mind which one you trust at this point. You know that she's angry. Again, we have this sense that people lie through their words. After a while, we look beyond the words. We focus on things that we feel as though people are not as good at lying through. That the real juicy stuff is found in the non-verbals. It's also probably true for humans that we sometimes let our nonverbals doing the talking for us because we live in a fairly non-assertive, polite world. You probably go through life without ever saying certain things that you're thinking. You can go through life without ever saying, look, you're kind of boring me right now. I want to talk to someone else. Or, you smell. Or, I don't love you anymore. You might think these things, but you might try not to say it. What you might do is you say nothing, but you kind of beam out these vibes through your nonverbals and you hope that people get it. That's how a lot of communication happens. Now, it could well be that the person in the interaction you just watched wanted the other person to notice that she was angry, but for whatever reason, she just didn't feel like she could say it. If you ask somebody out on a date and they say, yes, yes, that sounds good, but they sound disinterested, you're probably going to weigh that fairly heavily in working out whether that person is really into you or not, or at least you probably should. Young children place slightly more reliance on words. Babies start off pretty hopeless, right? If you've ever seen babies, they just don't know what they're doing. They don't even know that these hands flying all over their face are their hands. They've got no idea. Then within two years, they've got this precocious semi-mastery of language. Their capacity to absorb language is phenomenal. It takes a little bit longer to be able to understand the subtleties of their language. That's something that adults tend to be good at. The fact that children are a bit more literal, they focus on the words, can cause problems when adults are talking to them, because quite often we purposely bend the meaning of what we're saying through our nonverbals or through our tone. If you think about sarcasm, what is sarcasm when you actually break it down? Sarcasm is when you say something positive through the verbal channel, but through the nonverbal channel, through the tone, you indicate that you actually mean something negative. Usually, adults are pretty good at picking up on sarcasm, so long as you're not trying to do it over email or anything. Interpersonally, they're pretty good, but kids, less so. 
The opposite of this is good-natured teasing. You say something negative through the verbal channel, but you actually indicate through the non-verbal channel that you're actually very affectionate towards that person. It's a hard one to pull off. You don't want to mess it up. And in some cultures, nicknames become more and more offensive and cruel when people like each other the most. Also, we rely on verbal and non-verbal channels differently depending on what we're trying to get out of a situation. In this context, where I'm talking to you about academic content, you might be dimly aware of me waving my hands around, but you're probably not going to focus on that that much. What you're really here for is facts, and words are the best things to communicate facts. But Riggio makes the point that in a social context, we focus more on the non-verbals. If what you really want to know is, does this person like me, or is this person bored, in this context, you're probably going to focus a lot more on the non-verbals.